Today, the Kent Travail is gonna meet its gods. We're gonna be fair to it. I'm not sending it up the creek without a paddle. I've actually given it some upgrades. Upgrades that I feel would give you the most bang for your buck should you find yourself the owner of a Kent Travail. So firstly, a lot of you suggested we get a derailleur with a clutch. See, the derailleur that's on here is actually not bad, but you can see that when you hit bumps, the cage moves very easily, puts slack on the chain, and allows it to come off the front chain ring. Oh, I just dropped the chain. A derailleur with a clutch has some resistance over here so the chain can't move as easily. Now the problem with that upgrade is that we get rid of a perfectly good derailleur and then spend a bunch of money on a new one that sort of puts us up to the price of like a better bike. And I do not think the derailleur is the weakest link in this drivetrain. I think it's the front chain ring. So on a good bike with a one by drivetrain, you have a single speed chain ring. A single speed chain ring has alternating teeth. One is narrow and one is wide, just like a chain. This way it provides the most contact with the chain possible and helps it stay in place. Now the chain ring that it came with is sort of like that, but not really. Now to further complicate matters, you can't change out this chain ring, but the bottom bracket blew up on this bike. Ooh, what's, what's that? That wasn't a good sound. And it might blow up on yours. And so I've come up with a solution for $55 on Amazon where we have a much better externally mounted bottom bracket and a machined aluminum chain ring with new crank arms. And this is gonna provide much better chain retention, hopefully fix the bottom bracket issue. And for $55, I think it's gonna give us more benefit than changing the derailleur because it's killing three birds with one stone. Now the next upgrade I did, I honestly don't think is as necessary, but I'm gonna be going fast on this. And so I put hydraulic disc brakes on it. $68 hydraulic disc brakes off of Amazon. Now, you probably shouldn't mess around with brakes because they're the one thing standing between you and let's say a tree, but there's some redundancy. We have two of them and I honestly think they're safer than the ones that came on it. They had these big levers, you have to squeeze them so hard these, they seem to operate like really expensive hydraulic disc brakes. They feel good, you can bring the wheel to a stop with one finger. If they hold up, these are cool, but like I said, that's a risk that I'm willing to take here. So if you were to buy a Kent Travail from your local Walmart for $398 and install these parts on it, you would have spent 521 US dollars for a bike with a one by nine and hydraulic disc brakes. And so if these upgrades provide some benefit, we're gonna have a pretty good bike here. But I'm getting kind of impatient, and so we're not gonna take this on a cross-country trail. Predictions. Well, I think we're still gonna drop a chain, but the chain retention's already way better this time than last time. I think the fork is also gonna start showing its limits. The new brakes we put on are gonna perform perfectly. And as long as we don't crash, I think the wheels are gonna be okay, but we're gonna keep an eye on the spoke tension. Other than that, it's a heavy alloy frame. I don't see anything happening to it if we stay rubber side down. So let's push our new and improved Walmart bike to its limits and uh, yeah, see how that goes. So far, so good. Does not feel like a department store bike, that's for sure. Ooh, I am clapping this fork a lot. This is very bumpy. Oh my God, forgot about that. Mater. This bike is 
oddly pretty decent at steep technical terrain, and I don't think it would be without replacing the brakes. We do have to remember that this has a lot of the characteristics of a cross-country hardtail. It's got short travel, tires don't have much tread. Keeping that in mind, it descends pretty admirably, especially over technical terrain. Having a lot of rubber around the wheel definitely helps. We would have been pinging the rim with anything smaller. I'm impressed. Oh, here we go. Jesus. And a lot of those technical moves would be next to impossible if I didn't change the brakes. Oh. Jesus. So I did a little drop test on the bike before we move on and it's not a good sound. Front wheel is loose, which is strange. I mean, we closed the quick release. Um, this is a Suntour fork. It's not like a Walmart fork. Let's chalk it up to I didn't close it with enough tension and we're gonna keep a close eye on it because that's not good. You know, honestly, the only thing holding this bike back from a climbing perspective, tires, not a lot of tread. These are fast rolling, like kind of cross country tires. And that's okay. If you had this bike and you ever wore these tires out, wanted to add some ability, you get ones with more grip. I re Ooh. Yeah, there's an example. <laughs> eh, that was my fault. Okay, I did drop a chain on that. <laughs> that was a little much. Like you guys said, we need a derailleur with a clutch. I just think if we would have done that, we would still drop chains with the chain ring we had. Let's do a little welfare check before we go any further, shall we? You can see when we rock it back and forth, the seals are moving. There's a pretty good amount of slop in here. But with that said, you will regularly find this same fork on $900 bikes. Uh, brakes are incredible. Like, they, they actually have a lot of power, and I'm not having to work very hard to keep the bike at speed. They modulate well. Crank set has been just, just freaking perfect. And while I'm not riding as fast as you could on, let's say, a more capable bike, I'm not going slow. Bike is getting a fair beat down. Okay. I kind of saw that coming. Angle the route. Straight down on the derailleur side. Hopefully we didn't mess anything up. Ooh. Probably got a little cocky there. A little more. Survived. So, our Kent True Vale did not true fail today. It's still running, it's still pedaling, it's still working. We could take it on another ride. Needs a tune-up, but that was a big kid trail. Let's take a look at what's actually wrong with the bike at this point. They're all kind of minor things. So first of all, I crashed, and so the derailleur hanger is a little bit bent. We would just need to put that back into alignment and the shifting should be fine. Our bottom bracket is perfectly fine. That was a huge upgrade for $55. It definitely feels more robust. The bearings have a wider stance, effectively making everything stronger. And we've had no failures. We beat on it really hard today. We didn't get a flat tire. The tires held up. I did complain that they don't have enough 
tread, but that's not really a complaint against the tire quality, that's just the style of tire. Both the front and rear wheel have a little bit of wobble going on. I think after we true them, they should become a little bit stronger from it. The fork is a little bit sloppy. Where the lowers kind of meet the stanchions, where this wiper seal is, it moves around a little bit more so than before. I don't think to a dangerous extent, but it's worth noting. I would be interested to see how one of those $150 Amazon air forks works. We should torture test one of those. Now, the real winner today, these zoom brakes, these hydraulic disc brakes I got off of Amazon, I, I'm honestly flabbergasted at how well they perform. They felt amazing. Now, how would they perform after sitting in your shed for the winter? I can't tell you. I can only tell you that on this ride, they felt as good as a set of inexpensive Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. The reason people find this so fascinating is because they're looking for a hack. They're looking to beat the system. You go to Walmart, you buy this really cheap bike, and then you change out a few parts, and you end up spending less than a really good bike, and you get the same performance. That's what everybody wants to think. We've kind of accomplished that. That was the most impressive cheap bike I've ever ridden in terms of how it felt, how it climbed, how it descended, and it's only a little bit over 500 bucks. So let me know what you wanna see next time. What kind of economical upgrades can we make to the Kent Travail? What type of tests can we do to it? I think we might have found that hack. We might have beat the system here. This felt good. I, I don't, I feel a little bit sick. Thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time. Actually, the fork feels the worst when you go to bunny hop something and you pull up on it and it tops out. No bueno. Whew.